product walkthroughs or review style videos, then M Review for DaVinci Resolve is the perfect pack for you. This comes with everything that you need, like titles, transitions, detail, analysis, breakdowns, effects, literally everything that you could ever need to up the production quality of your review style videos. And it's super easy and fun to use. So let me go ahead and show you around inside of DaVinci Resolve. Once you have installed MReview using the M Installer application, it can be located in your effects library up here. Under video transitions, motion VFX, you will see we've got five transitions here. Titles, MReview, we also have some icons, infographics, tools, and typography presets. And then coming down here to effects, we also have some camera animations and several of these placeholder slash presentation presets. So let's go up to the top here and let's just search for M review. This is going to pull everything together all in one spot like this. So let's start off by looking at this intro preset. Now this is in the placeholder category because it uses media. This particular effect uses three pieces of media. So if I stack uh, these three clips together, now let me just go to the end of the shortest clip here and I'm going to trim these so that they're all the same duration. And then I can select them all and right click and choose new fusion clip. And then if I drag on this intro effect right onto this fusion clip, we have kind of this really cool flashy title sequence utilizing all three of those clips that we pack together into this fusion clip. And if you need to rearrange the order of the clips, you can right click and open in timeline. And from here, you can see it goes from bottom to top. So if we wanted to actually start with this shot here, I can hold Control and Shift together or Command Shift if you're on a Mac and just drag this straight down to the bottom and that will just swap those two. So now if we double click our main timeline to get us back here and now you can see we have reordered all of those shots. So super easy way to create an engaging intro for your tech reviews, your product reviews, all sorts of things. Now I'm actually going to delete that intro effect and let me show you this presentation number one. So this one can use up to six sources. Now in this case, we only have three, but you can see this little message up here, it says built for fusion clips with six sources. So this can use up to six. Now you can see because I've only got three, uh, and we play through the clip, it kind of leaves these three kind of off angle because again, it is expecting three additional shots to be in this location. But if you go over here to the drop zone controls, you can change the drop zone count. In this case, I can just choose three and you can see that's going to rearrange these three clips so that they're actually centered. And you also have your title controls here, which of course you can customize. All right, let's take a look at a couple of these icons. You can hover over these to see a preview on screen just like this. And all of these are completely customizable. Let's take a look at this custom bar right here. I'm just going to drop this right on the next shot in my timeline. And you can see it kind of has this bubbly animation with a nice little drop zone avatar right here. So if I go into my drop zone controls here and just hit browse, I'll just select a photo and you can see that adds the photo right inside of there. I might want to increase the mask scale a little bit here, maybe reposition that image inside of the circle. And I really like that sort of liquidy type of animation. Now you can also change the color if you come down here to the button controls. You've got this button outline gradient. So if I select each of these triangles, I can choose a different color. We can try something more of like a warmer color scheme like this. Looks nice. And of course you can go into the title controls here and type whatever you want as well as the content controls. So we can position this somewhere else in our frame. Now let's take a look at this icons here. So this one actually has four different options here. So you can see it's got this location icon here, but if you go into the icon controls, you can also choose favorite, which is kind of like this star. There's a heart for love and a thumbs up for like. Same kind of thing with this. You also have the gradient colors here. If you want to sort of match a certain color scheme with your brand or your channel. Now take a look at these shortcuts here. So let's actually drop this on the next shot in our timeline here. Now this one's cool because it's got a Windows and an Apple logo. So if you go into the shortcut controls, you could enable or disable one operating system or if you want to have both of them. Now let's say I have something shorter like this, for example. If I turn off the Windows, then I can easily just take my 
apple position and just move this a little bit over with my X control here. And then down here, we also have the bar width, so we can just reduce that. And let's maybe readjust the Apple logo as well as the center of the text so that it kind of fills in this rectangular shape there. And you can see that animates each letter one at a time with a really subtle rotation. Now, similar to the icon, we also have two social media icon options. Now, both of these are pretty similar and they actually have several different options for all the popular social media platforms under the logo controls, logo type. We've got Facebook, Instagram, you know, all the main popular platforms. All right, let's take a look at these infographics. Now, these are a really great way to display a lot of information at a time in a really elegant way. So for example, this comparison to chart, let's just drop this on to the next shot right over here. Now what's cool about this one, you can see this top line in the list is highlighted and the rest of these are white. And so if I come over here to my list text controls, I could customize the text if I want to. And after I do that, I can use this write on control here to select what area of the list there is highlighted. And this can also be keyframed. So if I actually reset that and I'm right here about, you know, a third of the way through the clip, if I add a keyframe and then just move ahead one frame forward with my arrow key, I can slide these controls and select 4K camera, the next item on the list. And now if we play through that, you can see that it's gonna pop right there on those keyframes. And I could animate these line by line when I'm talking about each topic in my review, for example. So just a really easy way to customize and add production value to your review videos. And then we also have a couple of these meters. You can see this one kind of scales up and of course you can input the number and the percentage of that bar will actually update. Now this one's a little bit different because it's got two different text controls. So if you come into the subtitle text, you can input your own value here. And then the main text here, you can enter whatever value you want there. Now this one doesn't automatically calculate the difference between these two numbers. So you will have to go to the graphics controls and just change the value select here. So if I wanted to say, you know, do divided by two, that's going to give me 12 and percent. And then I can go into my text controls and just do something like 32 gigabytes out of 256, but the rest of these are pretty smart. Like for example, this range control, let's put this in its place. Now let me show you how this one works. So under the graph controls here, you've got a max value in value one and value two, and these will automatically calculate their proportion depending on the value that you enter in here. So if I change my max value to something like, you know, 25,000, my lower input, I can say 1300, and then we'll do like you know, 8,000. You can see all of my numbers update accordingly to that larger number. It even puts in the commas, which is really nice. And just like all the other presets in this pack, you can change the gradient to fit your brand. So really easy to customize. Again, just clicking these triangles like this and adjusting their colors. Or you can add another color just by clicking inside of this gradient bar. So now we can have three colors if I wanted to. And of course, right now I can't really see the blue color because our range is so small. So if I just take my value two and let's go up to like 20,000 or something, now you can start to see that blue there and it has a nice, beautiful animation on too. By the way, you can turn off the in or the out animation if you just want this to start as is, or if you just want this to animate in, but not out. So you have complete control and customization over the animation as well. Now let's come down here to tools. So these are a really great way to highlight a specific area on the screen. We've got these bubble selections. Now, if you hover over, it looks like it's just black, but this is actually transparent. So if I put this on top of my shot here, you can see it's just gonna create this nice little bubble here. And under the content controls, you can just adjust the position pretty easily, just like that. Now, some of these will actually affect the footage underneath like this magnification, which is why whenever you hover over, it doesn't really do anything. But if you put it on your timeline, you can see that it actually magnifies the footage beneath. Really cool. And you can change the size of that circle as well as the thickness and the zoom amount. So if we really wanted to highlight, you know, this specific lens or the lens mount, really easy to do that. 
This shot has quite a bit of movement and it doesn't really look that great. So I'm going to give you extra little tip here. So if I actually click on this icon to take me inside of Fusion, you can see the footage underneath this title on the edit page. And what I can do is actually add a tracker node. And I'm just going to grab this little square here and kind of pick an area of interest that I want to track. And I'm going to go ahead and just track forward. And then we'll go back to the frame that we started on and I'll just track in reverse. And now what I can do, if I click on my magnification preset right here, I can right click the circle position and go down here to connect to tracker one, tracker path position. And now that magnification will actually lock on to that specific area in the frame. So we can just simply go back to the edit page. You can see that the magnification actually follows that area of the frame. We also have a couple of these handwritten scribble effects. So there's a couple arrows got a squiggly arrow, a line that actually draws on. So that's just a really nice way to add a little bit of personality and a great way to highlight a specific detail in your frame. Now coming down here to typography, we've got several of these callouts as well as these checkouts kind of lists. We also have this chapter and this one's kind of cool because it'll actually cover the whole screen with black. So it can be used to kind of transition between two different scenes. So while this is covering up the screen, I could go ahead and cue this second shot so that whenever it opens back up again, we are into the next, maybe the next segment or chapter of our review. And under the background control, if you don't want this, you could disable the background and now you would just be able to see straight through the entire title if you wanted to maybe add your own background or just go ahead and reveal the footage underneath. And we also have a handful of titles, lower thirds, and I just think they're all nice and elegantly and thoughtfully designed, keeping the brand consistent across this entire pack. And lastly, we've got five transitions included in this pack, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Let me go ahead and show you how number two works, for example. So this one's got a flip direction toggle. Most of these that have a direction will have that. So you can see this one kind of pushes the first shot down and slides the next one up top. If you want to flip them, you can toggle flip and it'll come in from the bottom. And in the middle, you'll see there's kind of like this default gray background. You can disable this if you just want it black or if you want to reveal something else or make your own kind of abstract background or something, or just like all the others, you got the control to customize this gradient however you want. So maybe we can do like a kind of like a dark purple color scheme to match the color in this upcoming shot. So that's going to do it for this video. This is M Review for DaVinci Resolve. You can learn more in the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.